Thank you so much again for, you know, doing this. I actually very much appreciate you, you know, spending your yeah. morning with me. <laughs> No problem, man. And uh, yeah, you agreed to, you know, this is probably one of the fastest interviews I've ever arranged. So yeah, hey, you know, why, why mess around with it? Yeah, I'm gonna do yeah, shoot, shoot me an email. And, you know, I checked it out. Everything sounds fun. So let's do it. Oh, amazing. I, I so much appreciate it. I mean, it, 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 it was really like, you know, uh, just at the right moment, because um, I was literally just, you know, sitting and being like, I don't have anyone scheduled in, you know, I need to like start look for options. And I just saw your profile and I was like, here we go. <laughs> That's you know? it, man. Yeah. So it's just so funny because I have, I had a LinkedIn from forever ago, but yeah. so when I'm not on tour, yeah, I pr I've been printing t-shirts for a decade. Amazing. And I had my own print, screen printing company and then I had a kid and it was like a lot of extra work. So now I, I work over at my buddies when I'm not on tour and doing like sales accounts and stuff now. So mm -hmm. I just, like, somebody was like, you have to set up a LinkedIn. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. how, that's how you're supposed to do this. Like, All right, <laughs> so there you go. And you popped up and I was like, well, you know, this is not t-shirt related, but <laughs> They'll do it. I, I was literally going to ask you, like, you know, if, if it happens for you to like come across fans on LinkedIn, just trying to link up rather than any work related. Not, so. it, it's relatively new for me, the LinkedIn, but I yeah. do. I, it's always fun for me when I, I run into somebody in the wild. Like there's a, a new coffee shop in my town called uh, Crimson Hollow. That's like a, a very much like a goth coffee shop. So nice. of course I roll in there. And apparently the, the owner's big time Alice Santa fan. He was very excited. I said, hey man, I'm a big fan of coffee. So it works out. Like what's the because I assume you've meet you've meet fans everywhere at this stage. No, no, no. Not, really? not anymore. Back in I mean, sure, back in the heyday and stuff, but and it's so funny because like outside of maybe like where I live, I live in, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which is like mm. not a big, so we're not an LA band. We're, mm. we're like Southern East coast boys. No one recognizes me. And it's just so funny too. Cause like I have uh, 11 nieces and nephews and stuff. And like <laughs> none of them see me in the capacity of a musician at all. They don't want to see, they don't want to watch videos. Of it. <laughs> like they don't want to hear it. They just know me as like uncle Dennis. And so, if you know, especially as a, a musician, an older musician that yeah. like has a family and stuff, you have to wear a lot of hats. So it yeah. depends on what circumstance. So it is very fun for me when I'm in my day to day life and someone does <laughs> recognize me. I mean, once I once I'm out on tour and stuff, you know, everybody, but they're all there for the band. So it makes yeah, sense. yeah. But um, I assume though, like you, you have like these very strange situations where completely random person that would never expect oh, yeah. like recognizes you <laughs> so, oh yeah so <laughs> so my daughter uh was born very premature and she spent eight and a half months in the hospital while she was born oh, wow. so i was in the hospital yeah. all the time and one of the doctors that came in she's doing great by the way yeah, to go amazing, ahead and yeah. that uh but one of the doctors came in and uh, I mean, I got a lot of tattoos. So I always ask, like, you're a tattoo artist? I'm like, nah, musician. <laughs> like, oh, what band? I told him, he, he's lost. He's like, I used to get a warp tour, <laughs> like a big time. And so somebody goes, he's now he's like a doctor. <laughs> and he said, he said, I would love to tell my friends, but I can't because of, of HIPAA. <laughs> like, he can't disclose <laughs> any personal information about me. I was, I was like, I don't care, man. You feel free. <laughs> That's so fun, though. That's yeah. so fun. I was very glad to to see that it's kind of like it's this sort of cool towards emo music in the you know in the in the late twenty tens is kind of reviving now you know yeah yeah it's co it's coming back <laughs> yeah uh, it's so funny too because like and I love seeing like it because there are so many bands that we've toured with back in the day that are just killing it right now like yeah. you guys in pierce the veil bless the fall yeah. is like 
just come out of nowhere like a phoenix i said yeah <laughs> yes. baby the, the old the old boys the old <laughs> yeah. hot topic boys are back at it it was funny because i keep running into uh melissa marie and the billionaires yeah like we played a festival with them and stuff and it's just it makes my heart smile that you know here we've been a band for 20 this halloween will be our 20th anniversary nice. and we still like i can still go out and perform for a bunch of kids and stuff and you know, it's fun. Everybody goes through that period. That's what's timeless. The angst in high school. You absolutely. Absolutely. I like, you know, I, I'm uh, bringing up these discussions so much lately because mm. I'm so passionate about it. And, you know, uh, once I'm bringing it up, I'm kind of, you know, objectively when I'm assessing this, I kind of realize that I'm sort of, you know, turning up into this old gatekeeper sort of guy. <laughs> Can't do that. I <laughs> I was recently talking, I think I, uh, what was I posted on my Instagram discussion about what genre Alisana is and is it screamo? Is it post hardcore? We call it sweet core because we didn't know what it was. And people get real gatekeeping because my yeah. wife does our, our social media and she said, you know, Alisana popped up on Reddit in the screamo subreddit and I can't remember what they were asking something completely unrelated and everyone's just like wrong reddit post hardcore <laughs> <laughs> just like all right man. but i i am sort of the same way but like because i scream for the band i have a metal background uh -uh. so if you mix up death metal and black metal like i'm gonna correct you <laughs> like, these are very different kinds of metal so it is nuanced true true I but can, it's... i can appreciate it yeah <laughs> But it's so amazing because this period for alternative music, you know, this was the topic I was going to mention, like between 2005 up to like 2015, I really feel it's like the golden age of this music, you know? I mean, you got to think about what's happening right then because MySpace was a thing. It was like yeah. a really innocent social media platform. I remember because the band started in 04 and then we got our MySpace and we had a pure volume Yeah, and it was like, mind blowing that you could just release your own music and like it was a game changer and so you've had a lot of people you that weren't major label kind of bands you know but major indie label kind of bands uh -huh. that suddenly had a platform and we would get you know connect like we played like i've chalked up a lot of our success to us being one of the first uh screamo post hardcore bands to go to mexico and we did that based off of a MySpace message from a guy in Monterey. And we were like, sure. <laughs> like, I mean, what? You know, this approach we'll works. Go, yeah, just <laughs> we'll, we'll do it. And then a, a video surfaced of like, you know, us playing in Monterey and like the whole crowd singing along to our song Apology. And like, and that was like, so we started getting like uh, bigger record labels interest in us. But you know, that wouldn't happen today. Like, that just doesn't, yeah. like, we. I would never do that. I would never let my kid do that. That's <laughs> crazy. But it was like that infancy uh, where everyone was just excited about being able to connect with anyone about like music and like, like right now, you know, across the world yeah. having this conversation. Like, yeah. so that was, I think the golden age of that for sure. And it was yeah. kind of mixed in because you can't forget like fashion was such a big part of it and yeah, hot yeah. topics were everywhere. And then, Every dude a band had a clothing line. And like all <laughs> yeah. were, that's when I decided to start printing t-shirts. So I'm like, every other frontman front man already has a clothing line. Someone's got to make it. And I'm like, I'm going to do that. that Entrepreneurship. Like Entrepreneurship. Yeah. <laughs> so sad. Yeah, I, I completely forgot about this aspect. You know, so many, like every band that was kind of getting hot used to, like, as you said, a single member would do a clothing line in. Oh, yeah. You would get crazy and stuff, but yeah, you're absolutely right. But I was um, so stoked because uh, when you guys released um, The Emptiness, which is now gathering like a cult classic sort of status, oh, yeah. I think. <laughs> uh, I remember like I did one of these, you know, very awkward guitar covers of the artist. <laughs> and That's said, awesome. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> And I said it on MySpace to you guys. And, you know, you were one of the first bands that actually responded to it and be like, hey, that's cool. And I was like, oh, my God, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was. I love, uh, I love getting tagged on that stuff. There's, that's yeah. just like one of the sincerest, you know, invitations to the highest form of flattery. <laughs> All so, right. 
No, I appreciate it. We love that. We love <laughs> we love the Alisana fans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's a very specific fan base, I guess. I don't know. I'll be interested oh, yeah. to hear like what it you know what's your perception of it from your perspective but you know when it comes to just talking with people and uh you know just discussing certain bands it seems like there's alternative music there's able music there's alessana fans and there's like yeah, <laughs> ours, ours are definitely the misfits i can yeah and it's one of those things that, like for the longest time at least and I mean, I'm sure that's true with most bands in our area. Like we were the band, it was not cool to admit you liked Alice at all. Like we were <laughs> wow. just kind of in between like metal and hardcore. Like, and like I said, I came from a metal background and my friends, I love them. And you know, they're very supportive. They gave me so much shit for being in a scream of it, like for the longest time. I mean, but I think you can tell with my voice, like that's yes. the background I have is like metal metal. Um but and so when i met sean you know sean's a pop punk kid Mm -hmm. like he had no screaming background i think the the closest would be like thrice so we didn't really have a strong preconception going into it we're like okay we're just gonna make it work like you know screaming singing like i think my closest example was a tray you uh but both of us have a literature background like big time Mm -hmm. readers and like sean was in college for english for a while and I was like, I just don't want to write another song about a breakup. <laughs> like that's just <laughs> that's just how I felt about it. And like, and especially with metal, like my favorite metalcore band is yeah. the Black Dahlia Murder, hands down. Yes. And my thing is like, and I tell people like, I'm not saying they're the best metal band, but if you took what I thought metal should be and turned it into a band, it would be them. Like all of them are just like fucking, you know. <laughs> Just not not pretty boy metal dudes, just metal <laughs> dudes. All the songs are about like, okay, this song's about a preacher turning into a werewolf. I'm like, fucking brutal. That's yes. all you need. Yeah. Like, that's literally all you need to go with. And that's a metal song. And it's just like a really descriptive. And that's the way I write lyrics. And so like, all right. And our first couple albums, like we dabbled with it. Like the songs were narrative based, but they weren't really linked to each other. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of stepped closer and closer to it. And then the emptiness is when we're like, okay. Let's yeah. take it to the next level. And, uh, you know, that was the beginning of the Annabelle trilogy. So the yes. three albums again. <laughs> and then, you know, it's so tricky to writing lyrics narratively because then you really have to have a, like a, a supplementary piece of literature and mm-hmm. prose to help explain it. So then we did the book mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, we just offer something a little bit different. And I think that's why our fans are so crazy. Cause it's just like you can go as deep as you want. Like we're gonna, it's all linked together. And like that's just what we think is fun because we're nerds. Yeah. Like <laughs> man, I'm a metalhead nerd. Like that's what I do. I play I play Magic we all gathering <laughs> in, in D D. And like this is, you know, it's not for everyone, but the people it is for, I think appreciate that that is there. Yeah, I mean it was I, I remember what what was it like for me, you know, because um I remember I was in high school and as you've mentioned, I was very big on literature and obviously, you know, the type of literature you get involved in when you're in high school, very, tra- you know, tragic and poetic. Oh, yeah, and, you're going through uh, a lot. Yeah. You know, you like philosophical existentialism and stuff and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, when you're into this sort of stuff, you know how when you're younger, you kind of get this sort of profile that you have, you know, interests above the ordinary level <laughs> oh yeah that's because you you lack any perspective but you have exactly. like all the emotion that's, exactly. that's beautiful you can't you cannot fake that emotion once yeah. it's gone it's gone that's why yeah. i love people who write like poetry yes. especially during that time period uh-huh. you look back on it and you'll laugh at yourself and but it's like so real and that's one of the things that i make the joke about being a lyricist because like our most popular song is Apology, yeah. hands down, Apology. Yeah. And I wrote it when, when I was 18. <laughs> and I'm like, that's like a high school poem, dude. <laughs> and like, every, I'm like, it's just, I look back at it and it's like, if I took a page out of your book of poetry or diary <laughs> from when you were a teenager and I read it to you over and over, and, over, and it's just like, I'm glad it's connected with people, but it makes me so cringy sometimes. I'm like, like, that's so dramatic. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. This is how it um, goes, man. Hey, dude, you know, <laughs> we put it online. We put it out there, <laughs> put it on a CD. So <laughs> serves me right. Uh, yeah, I uh, I literally, you know, revised something like that as well, because obviously I was writing poetry back then, you know. You got to. Uh, yeah, you got to. And I was, uh, I came across, you know, some stuff I written back then a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, wow, I was really feeling it. You know, it it was so tragic and so poetic. And it's like, yeah, uh, if you you look from afar, you would say that I'm going some sort of very, you know, challenging hardships or whatever. But it's so fun, though. (laughs) That's the teenage experience. <laughs> yeah. It all it all seems like the end of the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh <laughs> but um, you know, you've mentioned that y- y- you, you know, when you got into a band, you you guys had like different backgrounds and different interests in terms of music. So was it like natural to kind of find a middle ground where you developed your own collective sound, or was it uh was yeah. it more of a rocky journey? Uh, it happened very organically, and I think it's a testament to why we've been around for so long. I'm, initially, you know, until the lineup fleshed out into what it's been for a majority of the lifetime of Alisana, mm-hmm. which is uh, it started, you know, with Sean, Pat, and myself, and then uh, Jeremy, uh, Shane, and Jake have been with us forever. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we very first started writing and we were exploring each other's sounds and everything, uh, I think the different backgrounds helped us all stay in our own lanes. And I think that's the reality. Cause I've said like, dude, I went to college for product design, uh, in high school. I was like the president of the art club. I have a visual arts background mm-hmm. and I accidentally figured out how to scream. And like, <laughs> that's how it is. I'm like, I've never claimed to be a musician. I've always said I'm a performer. I just happened to be able to scream. And so when I approach a song, I always say like the song tells me what the lyrics are supposed to be about. Like, I'm not going to write a bunch of lyrics and force a song onto it. I want to hear the mood of the song. And then it forms just, like I said, visual art. So a Mm. kind of a picture in my mind, like, okay, here's what's going on. And then, you know, with Sean, And myself, like, we'll sit down and work on song structure for vocals. And it really is like more like constructing like a think about like the framework of like a sonnet. And we just want to the template of like, okay, these this is gonna go here. We're gonna be screaming here, singing here. Here's kind of the melody. Screaming is more akin to writing hip hop lyrics 100% because it's more about syntax and rhythm Mm -hmm. and you kind of know how you want it to flow. And then you're going to go in and figure out how to convey your message plugged into like that rhythmic structure. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, all sort of map it out. And then we work together and it's just so funny because we write lyrics together, which helps because especially when you've been doing it for a really long time, you're going to repeat something. Yeah. Number one, you're going to say the same thing more than once. <laughs> and usually the other person will catch it. Like, yeah, dude, that's like, that's in another song. Uh, but the other is like, you know, especially if you're working on a whole album, just fatigue. And sometimes, you know, the lyric isn't quite right and you're ready to phone it in because you're tired. <laughs> and the other person's there to be like, that's not good enough. So, <laughs> and sometimes like some of the best, uh, singing parts are actually lines I wrote some of the best screaming parts are stuff that Sean wrote. Oh, wow. And like, it's just funny because it's like us living vicariously through the other one. So <laughs> was it good? But uh, yeah, so uh, to answer your question uh, and Pat, I cannot forget Pat, Pat, his fucking brain works on a completely different wavelength than the rest of us. Like <laughs> musically, he's like, he's there doing like melodies and stuff, but he operates especially like w- working with music and everything. And like, that's part of like, a, I think a really significant part of Alisana's sound is that just like Pat looks at music way differently. I know at one point he's like, ah, I can't remember what the condition is where people hear colors and stuff like that. I don't uh, know if you've yeah. ever heard of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff like that. Like, <laughs> wow. like, I, can, I can see the song. And like, <laughs> really see I'm like, okay, man. 
So that uh, that's there. It, it adds like you know, just kind of like a a unique sound. That I don't think like you can you can't you can't get that anywhere but fr- from the heart of Patrick Thompson. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's very, uh, I was, by the, and you asked something I was going to ask you because, you know, with all of your songs, there's such a specific atmosphere, you know, with the with the storytelling and, you know, the the very poetic, I guess, uh, characteristic. So I was wondering why, if the lyrics are coming first or if the music is coming first, why, how do you um, combine them? To make yeah. like something cohesive but i guess you i guess you answer that, that. M- music first man just let the dudes do what they're gonna do <laughs> i mean i i chime in once in a blue moon but really like like i said everybody stays around like i'm not like they're gonna do what they're gonna do then it's gonna help me figure out what i'm supposed to do so and you know to to get slightly back you know um when it comes to you revising lyrics that you've written like years ago Mm-hmm. Um, is there an occasion where you looked back on some of them and you were like, actually, that's pretty decent. I'm actually, you know, there's a couple of good ones. <laughs> I look, I feel like there's a lot of parallels between being a musician and producing a body of, of work and having a bunch of tattoos because <laughs> you're going to have some that suck <laughs> and it's important not to cover them up. <laughs> I, I've got some really bad tattoos and like it's important that they're there because it's the journey yeah <laughs> and that's how I feel and some of them are really cool and some of them like you know are special to you but other people think they're dumb and uh yeah that's like there's there's definitely some lyrics that stand out to me and I'm like man that was a good one yeah. there's uh there's one I'm very proud of mm-hmm. uh it's called it's from the song Paradox it is on Confessions uh and so i was just trying to think of paradoxes and so there's one uh the line is uh castle now but i'm your behind your queen as your king lays uh bleeding on the board mm-hmm. so castling is in chess you can only yes. castle yeah. if you haven't moved and so like that's yeah. the whole thing yeah. like is that this is an impossible chess move like you physically couldn't get your piece back behind the king and i was like that's a paradox i'm like there it is like it's it's written in the lyrics and so it's just dumb stuff like that so i sneak in all sorts of weird references to like art like uh there's song i'm gonna fans are gonna get mad because I'm, I'm gonna mess this stuff up uh it is on fair wings of vanity and wax and this is one of the lines that sean sings uh sacred and profane is our love and death i think it's from the third temptation of paris the song that has no screaming uh and sacred profane love is like a, an old renaissance painting that i just love yes. and it's like two women sitting on different sides of a well and one looks like super slutty and the other <laughs> one looks very prim and i like love that painting and so we like slid the lyric in there i was like okay that's so firstly that's absolutely hilarious that you've just mentioned the the you know the chess part mm. because this is actually one of my most favorite ones because in high school I used to train chess you know and I used to uh, go to <laughs> I used awesome. to go to like competitions and stuff like that and I when I heard that one See? I was like that's my bench you know <laughs> See? someone caught it that's like yes. literally the be- the best part about doing lyrics this way and having all these nerdy little easter eggs <laughs> is when someone comes up and they put and they're like this is it I'm like yes yeah, somebody got yes. it like that's awesome. Yeah, See, that's... we're we're a band for the nerds, for the for my people. Okay, <laughs> and you've mentioned art as well. So you were into art too. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. Uh, and so classically, so let's see. My mom is big time weaver, quilter. My sister is a like a ceramicist, so like a potter. Wow. Uh, my other sister went to college for a master's in fiber arts she's an art like we're a visual art family like everybody wow. so my that's why i took an interest in screen printing because mm-hmm. back when i was doing just a lot of art i was doing a lot of like screen printing mixed media and stuff like that so yeah I'm a visual visual artist all the way and that's why i do uh a lot of design stuff for alisana and that's where so now as i'm getting older as i'm approaching <laughs> 40 uh you know 
I've printed on uh, with automated equipment, like, you know, half a million dollar presses. I've printed wow. on little screen printing presses where you pull the squeegee by yourself and everything. And uh, physically, it's a demanding <laughs> gig. And at a certain point, that's when I moved into like sales account management. I'm yeah. like, yo, I can't like I can't physically continue right. to print, but for so long. And uh, the design thing, I mean, it just makes sense. Like I've known so many bands for so long and everybody needs T-shirt designs. So I'm saying, True. You, how about your old buddy, Dennis? <laughs> I'll just, I'll just hey. combine all the things I like, <laughs> art, music, you know, the T-shirts is all there. So, you know, we're, we're out here. Yeah. Doing, doing a little art here and there but yeah man uh visual art hands down is my background wow. so do you like yeah go ahead sorry no 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 go ahead yeah uh, i was just saying that uh, visual art especially recently has been my you know biggest thing mm. if you can hear if you can see oh yeah, yeah. oh nice <laughs> there you go yeah um but um um, do you like ha have like favorite painters, favorite works? Like, um, let's guess. I would, if you're talking classics, MC yeah. Escher all the way. I was an M I was obsessed with it, and like that's another reason I ended up in the field I did because I went to college for product design because it's like science, math, and art. And I'm, that's the kind of artist. I'm very formulaic. Like I just told you how we write lyrics, but yes. like a structure, like that's how I approach art. Like I'm going to make a diagram. I'm going to find, you know, golden spiral center yes. of interest. I'm really going to like math it out. Cause that's the way, like I think about stuff. So MC Escher mm -hmm. uh, is just seeing those. Cause he's I was a mathematician and he'd start with a mathematic principle. He was trying to illustrate visually come up with a bunch of drafts and then he would go back and make that like final like woodcut and do that print like super precise and i love that um more contemporary artists uh jake bannon from mm -hmm. converge is just yes. that jane doe that iconic and like especially with the kind of visual artist i was where it was a lot of playing with textures and that screen printing aesthetic mm -hmm. and layers uh and it's just i think he's just such a talented vocalist too lyrically he is yes. i don't know if you've ever sat down and read some converged lyrics for there oh. brutal yes. <laughs> like, it is brutal it's it's very raw and i love it when lyrics fit music and like the the lyrical structure fits his voice and like the intensity of it and uh so yeah i really enjoy his stuff too so you know and that's like and I like to, like I tell anybody, like, you know, if you're looking for inspiration to do a design, listen to some music, you know, hear, hear something, it'll put you in the mood the same way. You're getting stuck on lyrics, go to an art museum or something, like go to a park, yeah. and, like yes. do something, pull from all these different areas and it'll help you out. And trying to keep that, uh, that well-rounded, because design thinking applies to so many different forms of creativity and just trying mm -hmm. to. Make sure you're giving yourself a feed of inspiration without overdoing it. And it's very easy to overdo it with social media because you will see mm. the greatest. Everyone's catered their feed to only look like they just never fuck up. Yeah. And you'll feel like, why can't I do it? Like, especially so one of my hobbies is a game called Warhammer 40,000. I don't know if you're familiar. It's a miniature game. You build the <laughs> miniatures, you paint them. I got Hang on. I'm going to. Oh, uh, show us. Oh, yeah. This is this is oh, it. Wow. This is uh, Mortarion. Okay. The big dog. Wow. No, don't be too impressed because I did not paint this one. I had a propane. <laughs> I had a propane. <laughs> I, pro I wanted the showstopper so you wouldn't notice my horribly painted miniature. But <laughs> it's amazing, uh, though. Oh, dude. I love it. <laughs> and so, this is for anyone watching that doesn't know this is a game where you literally buy like a model kit you put the miniatures together then you go to a game store with other mouth breathing nerds with <laughs> rulers and tape measures and dice and you roll it out on the like giant rule books the whole nine uh so these paint miniatures are not pre-painted you have to paint them yourself that's a whole part of the hobby uh and when you go online looking for painting inspiration, it will make you feel really bad because you are horrible. <laughs> Everyone is horrible at painting. And all these people online are so good. And you'll want to give up, but you can't. <laughs> it's like you just have to 
turn it off and just go for it. It's like, it's okay to have a horrible looking army. And that's why I got one pro painted miniature. I said, that's how they'll see. And they <laughs> nice. won't see my, my little, my little scrub miniatures. But speaking of Warhammer, I don't know if you follow Henry Cavill at all, but oh, right yeah. now. Yeah, uh, but he's, he's very he's, much into it, right? He's bringing Warhammer to the people, and finally, everyone's like, "What's Warhammer?" Like, we've been here. I've been playing since I was fourteen. <laughs> like, over half my life, I've been playing Warhammer. I love well, it. I mean, and Henry Cavill is. I, I think he's part of the nerd crew in general. You oh, know, hundred percent, right? Oh With, my right? god, dude, it's he's like the worst is that like all the we all love him all the nerds love him yeah and then like my wife who is also a huge nerd like she's the one who taught me to play magic the gathering nice and <laughs> she's like when we we're on covid lockdown and henry cavill is posting like youtube videos of him putting together a pc and it's just like him with like a headlamp putting like ram and stuff she's like this is this is just like nerd girl thirst trap stuff. And I'm like, it is. And I can't even be mad at it. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's I, he's uh, our champion. I uh, <laughs> I saw quite a lot of comments because I, I remember that this video did the news. Like it was everywhere. And I was I remember like, you know, so many comments about it and all the male notes being like, hey, we can't blame the women. We want him too. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> You can't even, it's just a, there's just a guy putting a computer together. I mean, any, any other man, yeah. <laughs> just revolts, <laughs> revolts women, but Henry Cavill, it was, it was boys and grace. And so, yeah. And he's spearheading the, the Amazon project to bring the uh, Warhammer universe to life with Amazon. And we're with him, dude. All right. He yeah. quit the Witcher because they lost the faith. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I trust Henry. Uh, there's it, a lot of it, there's a lot of doomsayers in the Warhammer community saying this is a mistake. I say no, <laughs> no, it's gonna be awesome. Hey, I'm uh, you know, uh, I'm part of the crew that it was so excited to see him actually being tied to what rumoring to be tied part of Marvel as well. So mm -hmm. I see lots of people talking about that, and I'm like, yes, you know, you oh, that that's going to be good. Uh, <laughs> But um, are you are you into any other games as well, or like hobbies into the nerd realm? Yeah, not, let me see if I, I can show you this. All right, let's see. So okay. right beside this webcam is this giant overhead webcam. Nice. Because I play uh, Spell Table, which wow. is online uh, Magic: The Gathering. So it's like me with my actual physical cards. Wow. So I've got my 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 real magic oh, cards over here. And then nice. the webcam shows the uh the map and this webcam. So it's like uh me, uh especially a lot of the a lot of the dudes who are in the band limbs that we toured with. The last tour we did, we uh played a lot of magic backstage and we got home, like we gotta keep it going. So you can <laughs> play it online with each other and we try to squeeze it in like uh, every couple weeks. So yeah, we do. I, I I play a lot of real nerd stuff. And then uh, on video game wise, my wife is way worse than I am. She's playing like Baldur's Gate three nonstop, and I'm like, go to sleep. <laughs> like, get some sleep. We got a three year old. Go to bed. Uh, but like if I'm sitting in the van or something on tour, uh, on Switch, I'm a big Monster Hunter guy. I don't know if you played any of the Monster Hunter franchise. I've been playing. Since it was on yes, uh, PSP back yeah. in many, many moons ago, I played like every monster. You're game. saying like, you're saying that as it's ancient. <laughs> oh, it is, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so old. But I mean, every one of those games that comes out, I put like probably four to five hundred hours on it. Just nice. especially from being on tour. It's really easy. And especially, I don't drink. I quit drinking eight years ago. Yeah. So if you drag me to a bar, I've got the Switch with me. And I'm going to sit there. And some drunk girl is like, are you really playing video games? I'm like, yeah, I'm really playing video games. <laughs> like, like, I, I, I remember, you know, probably around, well, 10 years ago. Now I'm old as well i guess uh but i went to i went to do this sort of a podcast with mayday parade as well you know and that was the first time 
uh, me and the crew would go into a tour bus and we were like, wow, we'll see the big secrets there. And everyone yeah. like partying then, drinking. <laughs> and I go there and I see Derek like playing on a, on a Nintendo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I somebody want. making it, somebody making a sandwich. It's yeah. just like normal life. Yeah, one hundred percent normal life. Yeah, yeah. It, could, yeah. It, it could be disappointing. Yeah, <laughs> same. But in in you mentioned Bless the Fall as well. My first encounter with Bless the Fall, Alia just was just joined the band. I remember, and mm. you know we would go to interview them, and I'm like, wow, Bless the Fall. You know they're so, um, you know so uh, like everyone on the stage so you know energetic and stuff like that i wonder what what it's going to be like in the you know in the backstage and elio would come in flip-flops and be like hey do you want to play some fifa (laughs) (laughs) exactly (laughs) oh yeah that is it is so funny especially and that's what the a lot of those dudes that we've toured with back in the day and i'm like glad that so many of them are still doing it i think a lot of that is the bands that continue to succeed are ones who understand like i was saying you have to be different people you have to have different sides of you for different people Mm -hmm. like if i went home in my capacity as husband and father here acting like i did on stage my marriage (laughs) wouldn't do well and the same like i can't like if i go on stage people paid good money to get their faces rocked and i need to go up there and be who i need to be and so but some people don't know how to flip the switch off. And like, that's the problem is like when people come off stage, their body's not on stage anymore, but their mind. So I was like, yeah, dude, like back in the locker room with all the bands, like, I don't give a fuck how many streams you've got or this number or that yeah. number. I'm like, we're all humans doing the same exact thing. We try to be as civil as possible with each other. Like don't let egos start getting in the way. And so that's what like it is. I think people have in their mind a lot more of a Motley Crue vibe painted. (laughs) But after, I mean, and, you know, I used to party with the best of them, but you could only do that for so long before (laughs) it's just like, you're either going to rehab or you're going to die. Like, you know, if you're going to do it for a while, you have to find your strike your balance. So yeah, you just kind of, it's pretty mellow back there. Like um, when you're mentioning, you know, people that are forgetting to flip the switch. Um, and I don't want any names. I, I, I'm not looking for controversy or whatever. Mm. But are there a lot of these sort of people in the scene? Because um, I don't know if I'm lucky enough or not. And, you know, I've communicated with lots of guys of, you know, of this field. But most of them, you know, they look just at, as you, you know, very down to earth, very fun guys, you know, mm-hmm. nothing... Uh, you know, n- nothing out of the ordinary, but I, I guess there are always some rotten apples here. And there. It is very few and far between. Yeah. And I feel like it's never anyone who's actually has the merit to act like that. It's always somebody who just thinks they're hot shit. And they're really like, not even, they're just like, I mean, you meet them every once in a while. And that's like one of my, my little pearls of wisdom in life. Some people suck. <laughs> like there's no reason to go. I mean, it's gonna happen. That's the law of just random possibilities. And some people are gonna suck. It is extremely rare, and it's like so. I've encountered a few times, just kind of like weird egos. Or I think it was at some point there was a debate, uh, especially on tour, like riders. Like people don't realize when you have a band has a rider, mm-hmm. like when. We get to a show, like let's say, like we played eight hours away last night. So we're rolling into town. We're getting to the venue, like one, 1 p.m. noon. Maybe we got something to eat. Maybe, probably not. We're going to load in. We're going to set up. Everybody's in a sound check. Then you've got like a little bit of downtime and then you've got meet and greet. And then the show starts and yada. Mm-hmm. So in the green room is like just drinks and little the food because we're humans and we need <laughs> a moment and so like it's like our stuff and like if you come and you ask or something or like you're one of the opening bands and you don't have anything I'm like yeah dude like we're gonna let you make a sandwich but don't be rolling up in there just helping yourself to stuff and like it's yeah. just poor taste and at some point a band that 
just helped himself to whatever he wanted. My tour manager rolled in. It's like, yo, dude, like you can't just like be in here when nobody's in here going through this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he started bringing up who's got what YouTube streams. It's like, yeah, dude, you're going to be like that. You're going to be like that over a turkey sandwich. (laughs) Just have a little more etiquette. This is all we're asking, you know? Um, no, that's a that's about the extent. Luckily, it's never been anything too severe. So, yeah. and for the most part, like I feel like, you know, some people suck, and it always they always sort themselves out in the end. So you don't have to deal with them too long. Yeah, that's most of the people who you would think have a crazy personality like that. It's just like an act, you know, like in oh, yeah. in closed doors. They're just not. They're just selling a product, you know. And yeah, that's part of that's part of being in the band. Like the reality of it is, like in a certain extent, we are a product. Or shipped into different towns, yeah. and like your brand is your thing. So you know, I tell, I get it. You know, I read a I read a very interesting you know meme the other day that you know saying bands are just salesmen that present their t shirts for thirty minutes. I do. <laughs> I've heard that, and I laugh really hard oh, yeah. as. As a literal T-shirt salesman <laughs> and, and a musician, that is not a bad argument. <laughs> uh, it is one of those things too because I talked. So the company I work for, mm-hmm. uh, Cotton Street Apparel. Okay, guys, it's out there. That's that's where it works. If we we'll want some up. T-shirts, we'll put it. All up. right, you you email me. Yeah, we're not. Uh, we are not the cheapest company, and that's <laughs> not what we do there. Like the, I've been over a decade experience. The owner has. 25 years of experience we specialize in like bougie printing we do all the water-based nice. stuff we do like discharge which is like you print with an acid that pulls the color out of the shirt and that's how you get the shirt no like no print yeah. feel and stuff yeah we do all that and like if you're looking to save 25 cents per t-shirt like there's plenty of screen printers out mm-hmm. there for you that's not what we do we don't nickel and dime it we're gonna give you <laughs> the best the best service all the art and so that's what we do uh and like I tell people, and this is like a hundred percent real. Everyone just streams your music. Okay. I, I know that vinyl has had a massive resurgence right now, yeah. but the reality is outside of that, the only physical thing a kid is ever going to have that has your band name on it is that t-shirt. True. And you're literally yeah. going to, it's like you're stepping over a dollar to get to a dime. And like mm-hmm. when you put, a shirt and you get the cheapest print on it on like a gildan just crampy yeah. shirt like if kid doesn't feel like he looks cool on the shirt and you don't feel like paying a designer and you get some kind of like scrub design I'm like come on man and mm-hmm. that's what like you are a brand and like hot topic and warp tour and all these like a part of this music scene is fashion that's hands down if you try to pretend it's not yes. you don't understand what the scene is yes and so you got to be able to up your game dude and i'm telling you and like i've proven it time and time again because we like have uh our web store which is now run by me and my wife so mm-hmm. if you guys want al santa t-shirts you go to al santa.store and it's literally getting shipped out of my basement i personally print them okay this is the real deal yeah and it's like they cost a little bit more i'm not gonna lie mm-hmm. we charge a little bit because it costs me a little bit more because they don't suck and everyone gets that like you know initial sticker shock and i'm like dude like wait till you get it and like people get it and they love it and i'm like yeah it's like it costs you five bucks more yeah and you're gonna get a shirt that you're gonna wear forever and it's like actually mm-hmm. printed right and it's not gonna wash out it in the actually wash. Looks and it's nice not on a on you. and yeah. It, it yeah it looks like the person who <laughs> so <laughs> sewed up the shirt saw yeah. a human torso before they did it <laughs> it's properly <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's and that's just one of those things and especially like we have things that like the company i work for is not filled with like minimum wage workers we all get living wage all of our t-shirts are printed on uh it's called wrap certified garments that means that every step of the process has been thoroughly investigated to make sure there's no like human rights issues and important stuff like that and i found that you know, lay it out there and people are happy to to do it. And like, you don't have to try to shortchange kids to get the most profit. Just be real with it and like, give them what they want. I'm like, all right, 
it costs a little bit more, but you're doing, you know, the right thing humanitarily. Or <laughs> more money is going to support the artists you like, and the shirt True. makes you look cool instead of looking awful. Yeah. So that's my sales pitch. So you can come <laughs> to an Alice Anna show, and I'll sing for you too. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the rest of it. That's a great one, <laughs> honestly. Song, right? <laughs> so, uh, but it is it is something I feel passionately about, and uh, you know, it's fun, and I love being able to print my own stuff to go from writing a song to taking that and taking it back to visual art and doing a design and then making the design physically appear magically on t-shirts and then you know ship them off to a kid and then have a kid post a picture like so excited i'm like i get to see the full circle and it's (laughs) it's awesome yeah i guess this continuity is like very Mm -hmm. rewarding you know yep for sure but but you know it's great to hear you know, how passionate you are towards that as well. And, you know, it, it, it makes great impression that you are openly talking about, you know, what you're doing outside of the band as well. Because oh, yeah, yeah. I, and I'm sure you know that, that many, you know, famous bands, you oh, know, yeah. they have like outside jobs, ridiculous outside jobs as well. And they're kind of trying to hide it and like, you I know, make, step I, around I it. I make that joke all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really? it is. It is one of those things, especially because there's like Google famous names and stuff. If you right. Google Dennis Lee, Al Santa is going to pop up and say my net worth is like $6 million. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm like, man, I would love to see some of that six million. And I mean, that's part it is. And it's, it's part of it like your job is to be a rock star. That's mm-hmm. part of your job. Like when kids have been going to their nine to five, saving up for this one night to go up there on stage, like you cannot go up there and try to be their best friend. That is not what they want to see. Yeah. They want to see the larger than life. Yeah. Boom on stage. And part of that, and especially with social media, is that you have to show a little bit more behind the curtain. <laughs> and like we all, everybody has to have a job. <laughs> like yeah. that's just how it goes. <laughs> I mean, there are rare moments where people are gonna, you know, just live off like and you know, a lot of musicians obviously work in the music industry. But like, I mean, the reality is like the lion's share of musicians, like they do this because they love it, and then they go back to the job that pays the bills yeah and like that's how it goes bro but nobody wants to hear about that online so that's yeah. like you're where you're like yeah and I'll, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> you know i i i do this on the side like yada yada so but i've always said i've called alisana blue blue collar rock stars I'm like, <laughs> nice. listen dude like this is this is it i get it it's like i grew up uh my dad like i said i'm, I'm from north carolina which is the south yeah. in the united states my dad is like a old southern man he owned a truck building company i grew up around welders and like those kind of days and i've got like this real larger than life image of the working man and it's like <laughs> there's just nothing more honest and then it's sort of like i being a musician i feel like i kind of cheated yeah. and like was <laughs> able to just avoid getting a real job for so long and so I, that is actually one of the things I like about printing t-shirts is that there is like so much of a physical skill based yeah. aspect to it and that you get the satisfaction of I start the morning, you know, with the stack of screens, I mix, you know, you mix ink and then you see a box of shirts with nothing on it. And then you're leaving, putting those shirts back into the box with you've generated something from nothing yeah and you know you get that real satisfied like it is complete and now i clock out and i don't think about it and uh you know that's what i did enjoy especially you know doing that off tour for so long but like i said getting a little bit older i'm gonna move (laughs) into the sales side so (laughs) it's a little less time in the press it makes uh, all the sense yeah it, it really is and especially like like i said uh comparing yourself to instagram too much is just not a good thing and yeah that's part of what goes on with musicians and like it's you don't want anyone to know that you have to actually work too but it's i mean that's how it goes bro so don't hate your favorite musicians when you find out they've got a real job you know just pretend like you didn't see it i think uh you know more than anything it's it well it it kind of creates better impression at least for me i mean it's true that you kind of you know you you acknowledge this as a positive thing once you got out of the 
you know, teen zone, I guess, but mm-hmm. <laughs> still. Um, okay, so, you know, you've mentioned, um, obviously, the side activity, you know, in, in, in being, you know, um, a day-to-day man. But as you've mentioned, being a rock star, although Bukoa, as you mentioned, it, mm-hmm. I'm sure you had some really great, like, rock star stories as well. Do you have these sort of memories? Oh yes, I've got. Let's see. Let's see. Podcast appropriate memories. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let me think about some big moments. It is. So I had one recently. So let me say. So when I started in music, yeah. let's say eighth. Eighth, so the end of my eighth grade year going into high school, I come from a background, I guess I was a metalhead. Uh, and it started with sort of, I'd say the progression from middle school went Rage Against the Machine and then Corn mm-hmm. and then System of a Down Slipknot. And then okay. I was in Slipknot. That's back in the day when it was like hot top. I was wearing Jinkos. Like ball and chain necklace. I was wearing a gas mask to school, and like, <laughs> yeah, I was a freak on. I was a freak on a leash. Okay, and, nice and then, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, and then I was uh, actually hanging out with one of my friends and played Warhammer with, and his big brother uh, drove us back from school to his house, and he played. Uh, it's a band called Undying. Okay, that's a metalcore band from where I'm from. Yeah. Uh, they have an album called This Day All Gods Die. And it is like the first time I heard screaming, screaming, like double bass, like hard, yeah. like hardcore metalcore. And it blew my mind. So I went to their show and I'm in my lock and chain necklace, my jinkos, all that stuff. Everybody else is in like tight jeans, black hoodies, bandanas over their face, that, that era of metalcore. So I stuck it out like a sore thumb. I got to see Undying. Uh, I could not stay for the last band. So I'm like waiting out on the loading dock for my mom to pick me up. And the vocalist of Undying came out and talked to me for like 20 minutes until my mom picked me up uh, just to see if I had a good time. Cause he could tell like he had never seen me before. I was there by myself. Uh, and I remember I was like, I want to be part of the music scene. Like, this is what I want to do. And like, I'm going to figure it out. Uh, so literally on the last tour, uh, that band had a reunion show in outside of LA when I was in LA wow. and I went and saw them and I finally told the dude the story and everything it's just <laughs> like so funny because like I'm like freaking out and like I'm in the front row of this venue and like it's they're a North Carolina band from 20 years ago playing mm-hmm. in California and like there are fans but like I was freaking out like screaming <laughs> everywhere and people were like looking at me and I told him the story and everything and he's like like cool, I have to check you guys out. And like, you know, my band has like hundred <laughs> times it's been like it's just a, you know, a lot more people have heard of Alice Santa. And it's just so funny. And so, but the point of the matter is uh is that I remember that interaction so specifically. And so when I meet people, and especially, you know, if I met someone and they say your music saved my life, I try not to become jaded about that i try to remember that genuine experience i had when i was 14 and this larger than life guy i met because i didn't understand i think when you're a kid and you think about music you think about like old arena like you will never actually meet these dudes and like in the local music scene you could like walk up and those interactions are so important that you're having with your fans because that is who you will be in their mind for all time And trying to take that moment to take the extra, you know, 30 seconds to listen, to let the people know that, you know, it's important how we've impacted them. And it goes like such a long way. So that's my big, it's like, it's people's reaction. Like you said, like Alice Santa has a very specific fan base and it is very nerdy and very (laughs) dark academia yes. and it's like very <laughs> yes. broody and the emotions are very strong and it's one of those <laughs> things that like i'm a, i try to be acutely aware of because you know <laughs> when you've got these these emo goth kids like i can't 
throw you into a tailspin, bro. Like you're, yeah. you're my people. And like, I love yeah. it. Like, especially when I meet like, you know, one of our fans that has like a shit ton of face piercing and colored contacts. And I'm like, that's my guy. Yes. And like, I know that every motherfucker you meet looks at you like you are out of your mind. And like, <laughs> you're here because you, you feel comfortable and this is you and that's fucking awesome because i used to wear a gas mask to school <laughs> and fuck those kids <laughs> like that's how i feel about it so i just i look you know i've got a dad haircut now but like that's that's me on the inside so i i i would say that's my my weird version of the answer to your question yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, i that's yeah. what i try to do i try to i try to keep it real I try to remember you know what impacted me so much about the uh music scene so that's that's my cool rock star moment i definitely you know that we've we've got other ones like yeah <laughs> yeah but not all on our podcast <laughs> my yeah. my wife is oh man so my wife is i've known her since the beginning of the band oh, and okay. she has like literally been my roommate when i was dating somebody else oh wow and, like, we've been best friends forever we've been like romantically involved for like eight years now but she knew me when i i mean i was a big time nerd in high school you know i wasn't exactly a hit with the ladies and suddenly everybody's interested bands, yeah i started seeing a lot of the girls that you know had webcams in the room for certain yeah, activities yeah, yeah, or sure. danced sure. in clubs and like <laughs> okay, my wife knows all of that and like she just <laughs> doesn't care <laughs> like she's like she knows so it's nice because i don't have to pretend she's like i don't care if you sign some girl's boobs or something i'm like yeah. it happens so few and far between now <laughs> but you know it's good to, it's good to know so uh that's, that, it that's amazing that's amazing but um but yeah it would be difficult to, <laughs> to change a transition you know to do a transition from this was part to <laughs> what i wanted oh, yeah. to say but uh uh but um yeah, as you mentioned, it's so important, and I'm basing this on myself to meet a person that you're looking up to, you know, a band that you're listening to, I have this conversation with them. It's like, I remember when this happened for me that it completely changed my life in a directory that I would never go otherwise, you know, if I mm -hmm. haven't met this one person. So yeah. uh, it, it's, yeah. it, it's good that, you know, you guys understand the importance of that in general. Oh, well, for sure. Because it's that's it. Like literally, that meeting that vocalist changed the course of my life. One hundred percent. That yeah. it was. That was the split. Yeah. And you know, he just had no idea who I was, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It was so important to me. You <laughs> didn't even barely even listen. <laughs> No, it's good. <laughs> no, it, it's right. No, some kid is saying that about me somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure it got me at the wrong moment. I fucked up. Yeah, to be fair, you know, and I was thinking about that um, a few days ago. Um, you know, I had a podcast and a face to face one with Wednesday 13, you know, with Murder yeah. Dose and Joy and Joy Johnson yeah, yeah. and all what's in that stuff. That's awesome. And, um, you know, he, he started freaking out when we started talking about Motley Crue and Nikki Six and all of this stuff. And I start, we discussed that. I was like, how what it is sometimes to think about your behavior when you meet those people in retrospective, you know, mm -hmm. because when I remember times when I met some of my most favorite musicians and I think about it now, it's so cringeworthy. So oh, I, yeah. I can't imagine why. Like, for you to be on the opposite side and to act as, you know, to accept that and to perceive and mm -hmm. to understand it and to not react to it in the wrongly manner is such a respectful behavior, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it is, you have to keep it, but it, it's, it's funny because on the opposite side in a specific scenario, and that's like the important, like, like I've geeked out from meeting like, like YouTubers or cosplayers that are like doing stuff that like I'm really into. Like I remember <laughs> that there was a cosplayer in Florida. I was talking with another band I was on tour with about 3D printing because I 3D print yeah. stuff for Warhammer or something. Nice. And they were like, oh, our friend does cosplaying and she 3 print 3D prints and a bunch of stuff. And I think she did uh, a Warhammer cosplay. And I looked 
And it's this girl who did uh, like a Sisters of Battle uh, Warhammer thing that like I was like all about. It was on all the Warhammer <laughs> forums. I'm like, this is awesome. I'm like, they're in a, and they're in Alisana fans. So I was like, I will send you Alisana shirts if you send me uh, like a signed picture or something. Like you nice. and this are like, where is my? Hang on one second. Yeah, show it, show it. Here it is, guys. If you're wondering, nah. we got we got the signed. Uh, Whoa, nice. Uh, Do you have like a collection of this sort of items, like signed stuff that you're proud of? Very nerdy stuff. Like, you know, I've got I've got Sting from a mini Sting letter opener from Lord of the Rings. Got laid over. Our, our house is like a generic nerd house where it's like filled with strange baubles from like different <laughs> universes. Like the amount of Warhammer stuff I have is embarrassing to be honest <laughs> but i've got like a lot of our like because we've got like the framed your album did this on billboard like kind of thing like plaques like i come to my mom <laughs> like, <laughs> i'm like mom will appreciate this and, like you know you can't have I don't know, too many too many of these things around <laughs> so but you know i do have some of that stuff there is uh <laughs> so there was a there was a dude in Denver, Colorado who did what was it called yeah. wet plate photography. I'm pretty sure that's what you call it. It was like plate. old school, like Civil War photography, where it's on this like weird glass plate. Oh and yeah, it has this really cool look. And he did a, a gallery where it was all musicians that like were coming through, and it looks like this old school like uh, photographer. So he sent me the picture i was like that's awesome like i'd love to get a print of that and he said okay yeah i got a printer like like what size you want i'm like i don't know what sizes are that and then he's like it goes it goes up to x size and i heard it and it's like this is just my personality and i was like let's go and i got it so the this self-portrait is the size of a hockey goal it's like that's it's enormous <laughs> and i got it framed and stuff and i laughed because i had to have one of my friends go with me to pick it up because my car wasn't big enough to fit it inside and i went to the frame shop and i didn't even tell them what i was there to pick up and they just go he's here because <laughs> he just did this giant portrait of myself and i took it out and it's just so funny because like i grew up and it was because my dad has this self-portrait uh of him from back when he was like a banker in a three-piece suit and like a leather chair and uh, the office and his rings on. And I was like, I want the power portrait, like this self-portrait. This is going to be <laughs> awesome. So I told him, I was like, dad, I, I got this giant self-portrait. Like, it's awesome. And he's, he's like, oh, that? Like, oh, your mother made me do that. She asked for that as a pre and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> oh, I, I just spent so much <laughs> I had to get out of your shadow and I'm just cast out. <laughs> and it was just so oh, now I got to see you. Yeah, my, my wife, can, like, it is my favorite because it's like, it takes not all walls can handle it, depending on where we're living. It's just like so big. And it is, I was like, whatever. I'm like, if you've got an Instagram with any selfies on it, I don't want to hear it. Because <laughs> if you have to come into my house to see this picture of me, and if you don't like the fact that it's four feet wide, it's your well. problem. Oh, that's amazing! That's absolutely fantastic. I do what I, I do what I can. Is this the is this like the most the nerdiest item that you have? The nerdiest is probably I still have it kicking around. Uh, I went to Dragon Con, which is in Atlanta, Georgia. It's kind of like a umbrella convention that does yeah. a lot of gaming, sci fi, and stuff like that. And I cosplayed as. Uh, what was that one? Uh, the cheapest character in Warhammer, which was like an Imperial priest with the most expensive <laughs> piece of equipment you could give him, which was a thunder hammer. And I like built the whole thunder hammer out of like wedding cake foam and, like cards and stuff. And I had like a whole cosplay outfit. I still got my my giant thunder hammer floating around somewhere. Nice. I also cosplay. I went to uh, Guardian Con. I don't know if you ever played Destiny, the video game. First yes. Person shit. Yes. Okay. So they had Guardian Con uh, in Florida, close to where our guitarist Jake lives. And I cosplayed to that 
as uh, RN Jesus, which is just like a video game about the, <laughs> you know, the deity that controls random number generated loot. So I had like robes that I had screen printed binary all over. Nice. <laughs> and, like, and I had a rosary made out of a D20 and stuff like that. And it was because like, that was back when I had long hair and a Jesus beard. Yeah. So it was just very natural. <laughs> so, Obviously. You know, I've, got, I've, I've got my, my D20 rosary kicking around. So yeah, we're are talking you, about. Are you into like an anime and comics and stuff like that? If you go to alsana.store right now uh you can see our uh <laughs> it's, it's sort of a waifu shirt it's Sarah's victoria from helsing uh <laughs> the girl it was designed by a woman so it's a celebration of the female form uh speaking but, about uh, that on 8th of march international women's day today so there you go uh, that's right see i'm a, <laughs> I'm a uh a girl dad and a loving husband with three sisters and it's just I love the anime Helsing when I was in high school, ah. and the, I've met up with this Al Santa fan who she's also a fantastic tattoo artist, and she actually tattooed the T-shirt design on my inner arm. Nice. So that, uh, I've got the more explicit version that I had to turn down her first design. I was like, we might need to cover her areolas <laughs> up a little bit to sell it as a T-shirt, but so it's like a vampire soldier girl. And I can't remember what line I said I wanted in the back. She's like, can I put my favorite lyric? And I'm like, what is it? And she said, my thirst for blood turns me on. I was like, well, it fits. <laughs> and so that t-shirt exists. It's in our web store. It is Sarah's Victoria from Helsing. If you haven't seen Helsing, awesome classic anime. I'm that school of anime, guys. So Helsing, uh, Vampire Hunter D, Berserk, X, Ninja Scroll. That's it. Like That's where I'm. I fall into it. <laughs> berserk that final scene in the golden Dude, period don't spoil it for anyone that's one of those oh, animes sure. that anyone hasn't seen berserk i'm like sure. watch it it is not what you think it, no matter how you think it starts it, like it is oh, not in there it's so good so, uh, i definitely yeah love berserk how can i say that oh um, it's it shocked me. It, you oh, know, yeah. it, I, I love that I'm complaining about spoilers about something that's been out for 20 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's still, it's still, but, it's but, a, so good. It's worth it. Yeah. But to be fair, you know, because today, for example, I finished Attack on Titan. And oh, okay. uh, yeah, and uh, I'm discussing it with this one friend I have that I usually talk about nerdy stuff. Because mm. most of you know, most of the people around me are not nerdy to my level, which is disappointing mm. to me. You know, it is. but it's, uh, they're, they're, we'll call them plebs. Oh yeah, Ple let's, plebeians. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it's actually a problem, you know, when you watch something that you're really invested in, especially with you know this sort of an anime that you get so much so immersed into, and mm. when you don't have a person to talk about that, it's like it's painful. You know, it's like, you want to share? love a person to share stuff with. But uh, yeah, I was uh, exactly talking with him about that because he was like, you know, uh, I won't say anything. So, you know, I don't spoil. You, you make sure that you're not saying anything to people that might watch it. And I'm like, Attack on Titan, it ended relatively soon, but still, you know. It's, it's like, been out for a while. Yeah, yeah. it's for those things. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that can't be your responsibility. But yeah, and uh, the last anime... I watch. I think it's from so I'm actually probably seven deadly sins nice. on Netflix, <laughs> which is just the. I mean, it's just the most cornball like uh. nonsense. But it's funny too because I print T-shirts. We my company works with a company called Color World that does anime conventions, and we yeah. print T-shirts that are like these full. Okay, so this is slightly screen printing technical. Uh, but like a full color separation means like I've got a giant press maxed out with like 10 screens. All of them are different colors and they all oh, wow. blend together to make a like a very photorealistic picture. Wow. And it is like uh, a lot of Jodoro, a lot of One Piece. Of there is some Cowboy Bebop. We did Seven Deadly Sense. And I can't remember which anime it is, but it is a girl. And a throne. It is a waifu thing. She's in like a bikini and uh -huh. like it's like zoomed in on her feet and her toe. And it's so over the top. And uh, 
part of the design is like the definition of like her outfit and you're supposed to be able to like slightly make out her nipples and stuff and we were like literally there at a screen like debating on changing the colors because you couldn't tell (laughs) (laughs) and i'm like this is what my life is (laughs) it's like but it's so funny because it changes where you work because i used to work for another screen printing company called holy mountain printing that does uh black metal merch stores so my wife is actually the head of mail order and I was the head printer. And my job was to like, look at these, like the nitty gritty, like technical details of this image and like completely glazing over the fact that it's like Christ getting decapitated, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know? And like, and I, another one of these full color separations where I'm printing a shirt and it is three witches, like covering jesus's mouth and cutting his genitals off (laughs) i'm like i'm not sure if this color of this brown is the right brown i might have to switch out the ink and stuff and it's just like people ask like so what kind of stuff you print i'm like it's usually uh you know (laughs) jc having like the worst day (laughs) like all the time so Oh my god! You know, it it changes place to place. <laughs> it's just so funny because you get so removed when you're it's, it, you're hung up in the minutia of printing <laughs> that you forget, you know, like how absurd what you're printing really is. Oh my god! You've seen just you've seen a lot of crazy imagery. I see. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> oh my but god! As far as anime goes, listen, we've got a wife who teach her. All right, it's on Alessandra's store. There's... I will be personally purchasing this one. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I need Get that bad boy. Uh, I, I'm definitely getting this one. Which is like, are you are you a Marvel or DC guy? That is so tricky. Um, I want to say I err on Marvel. I'm gonna be 100 percent real with you. Okay, comics is not my nerddom primarily, okay. gotcha. so I'm not gonna. Gotcha. I like when I was very young yeah. uh i was into like the tradable cards and stuff yeah but i definitely ended up going more of a high fantasy sci-fi gotcha. nerd and so gotcha. you know if that's what like there's so many different kinds of nerds it's true and it's like and they're all beautiful they're exactly all beautiful. i can list i can list them like <laughs> anime yes like tabletop strategy yes you know trading card game yes comic books that wasn't one of my, you know, gotcha, we've gotcha. got a different expert for you. Gotcha. Gotcha. Have you played Yu-Gi-Oh? You, I'm not, not Yu-Gi-Oh, but some of the dudes I play magic with, it's so funny because like I play magic, but the dudes I play with also play magic and Pokemon. And then some of them play magic and Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, if it were really up to me. And the reason I play magic is because I wanted to play with my friends who didn't want to spend money and time on Warhammer anymore. So if it was really, <laughs> if it was up to me, we'd be playing Warhammer, but you know, we could compromise with magic. And it's the same way with these days. Like I'd rather be playing Yu-Gi-Oh, but I guess we'll play yeah, magic yeah, we'll play since <laughs> everyone has a magic deck and it's easily accessible. So, you know, you got compromise here and there. Uh, you have to. It, it, it's but for I did the get, nerdy brothers. So. I got lucky that magic the gathering started doing universes beyond and the first universes beyond crossover they did was with warhammer so there are warhammer magic the gathering decks and i fucking love them and i play with them (laughs) all the time and i've made like a bunch of others they're about to do marvel i i actually saw the the warhammer ones they Mm -hmm. they probably got released relatively soon right like it's been a couple years but yeah yeah. this is relatively because they've done that, they've done Doctor Who, they've done Lord of the Rings, and they're about to do Fallout. Nice. I've always wanted to play Magic the Gathering because when I was young, I watched the cards and they were so beautiful to me. You know, mm-hmm. they were so... Should have held on to them because those old cards are worth a ton of money now. Really? Uh, you, can, you can learn... Oh, yeah. You can learn how to play Magic uh, Magic, uh, the Gathering Arena. Mm-hmm. It's like an app you can get on your phone, but it's like literally a digital version of the card game like it plays the same exact way you're casting digital cards but listen dude if you're a long a chess guy who enjoys strategy that's all these games are man you're you're trying to think a couple moves ahead you you'll get see i don't i don't know if you, you've got a, a girlfriend or wife but she'll get really mad because all your money will disappear <laughs> that's that's the most powerful magic the gathering card is the credit card <laughs> so you'll just start throwing it you'll end up with boxes and boxes of cards 
Like that's just ugh, that's just how it goes. I'm like literally looking around at the shame. Like I've got just like these Whoa. boxes filled with cards. Show show us your favorite card. Uh, I got a couple of decks in here. I think I was playing in my basement the other day. So I don't know if I let me let me I'll grab a deck. Okay, gotcha. All right, this one's this one's not mine. This is one of my wife's. So <laughs> if you play magic, don't also there's a clear distinguish. So you, you can't oh talk. yeah. No, we have this is this is my wife's deck. <laughs> okay, we gotta have those boundaries. Uh here we go. We got uh exhale sign of Atraxa. So I can get this in, in frame for you. Yeah, uh, this, this is just a, a dirty card. There is a, a, I think there's over 300 different keywords in Magic the Gathering <laughs> of different abilities. And this one has a little one called Toxic, which is you're trying to poison your opponents to death. And people really don't appreciate that. <laughs> my wife plays these, these dirty little decks. It's funny because my wife beats me all the time she's the one who taught me how to play magic i oh, didn't know wow. how to play magic. and that's so like so i mentioned that my daughter was in the hospital for a while yeah. uh previous to that my wife was on medical bed rest in the hospital and i was like we got to have something to do i'm like why don't you teach me how to play magic so i go to like the local game store in town i'm like here's the deal kicking into the hospital she's going to teach me how to play magic and they said you were literally the first man to ever walk into this building and say my wife is going to teach me not i am going to teach my wife <laughs> <laughs> and they're like this has literally never happened i was like well you know she's a special lady oh, uh man. so they gave me all this free stuff to give her like just like little swag things and everything to <laughs> decor decorate her hospital room with so more power to it it's, uh, it's women's day my wife is quite a woman. So if you're a nerd out there and you're watching this and you're cashing a common thread, marry a nerdy girl. <laughs> like you're going to be a lot better off. Yes, you have to divvy up the magic cards, but at least you will. And she's like the worst enabler. And like Christmas, they release these like Lord of the Rings, like art sets yeah. that like all of the cards fit together into a picture. And there was like four of them. And I was like, well, that's ridiculous. I don't need four of them. Like, I can get one or two of the scenes I like. She's like, they give you a discount if you get all of them. Just go ahead and get all of them. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no. <laughs> and she's like, anyway, I'm like, okay. Just like, this is the worst. Like, this is not, like, we should this not. That's how it's supposed to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're supposed to be mad at me. So. <laughs> Like so when, does, when do you when do you play together? Is it getting like competitive? Oh like, yeah, <laughs> and like it's so funny too because I'll play with like some of my other friends' wives and their wives will play, yeah. and like they will not attack their wife, and I go after my wife. <laughs> She's so, like so mad, but then like <laughs> I finally the last game we played, uh, I was like I'm gonna take it easier, and she's just took she went for my throat. <laughs> she just absolutely <laughs> went for my throat. I messed up. And she's like, that's what you get. And it's funny too, because I she was playing a deck that I had given her uh, a custom magic card as her Valentine's Day present, which is nice. an actual magic card, but I have my friend like face swab it to be her and like proxied it. So it has all her name and stuff nice. and built her a deck around it. And it's like Casey the Witch Queen and shit. Nice. And that deck was like, just so fucking crazy <laughs> it's like it, she beat like me my drummer plays and then one of the guys in my drummer side project and like we were all hanging out and she just wiped the floor with everyone. <laughs> i was like i'm taking that deck back <laughs> like, that's, that's too much man oh that's so cool that's, She's ruthless. that's yeah that's so cool yeah i'm just hoping that because um as we've been talking about that like i just don't have too many people to discuss this stuff with you uh, know so, so this, uh, i'm really so I'm gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to start get you to start playing magic start playing spell table with us see that's the best thing about spell spell table is exactly like this it's like a webcam room where we're chatting but there's like a separate monitor that has all of our play mats with uh -huh. all of our cards so it's like it they really dialed it in when during covid because it's like it has the software uh, on the website where you can tap one of the cards because you can only sort of see them uh -huh. and it'll pop up like with the actual rules text Whoa. and everything for it. Yeah. So it is, it's super fun, man. Especially it works for me because 
you know, I got a three year old. Like, I can't roll down to the card shop. Like, whenever yeah. I, but like, once she goes to bed or I can get somebody to watch her, I can sneak into the other room and play. And, you know, so it keeps the social interaction. Cause that's the one thing. Like, I love video games as mm-hmm. much as the next guy, but I, <laughs> it's cause I'm a, uh, I'm a Warhammer nerd and I like to see the light leave my opponent's eyes. <laughs> I want to be across the table, like, especially Warhammer, because a lot of people, find out like warhammer like oh have you played this video game like that's not the kind of warhammer i play <laughs> i play tabletop you have to put your miniatures together you have to paint them it costs too much money so you know it's people are really invested and like that's i'm an art guy so like i used to build all the terrain and all the like the nice. bunkers and stuff and like and i want you to spend all this time and then i want to whip your ass and let you know <laughs> that it was for nothing <laughs> like that's it so uh, magic is the same thing you know it's all the time you get to see him face to face and just see me hissing from across the table i i you know i'm uh i can uh, this is so me you know because especially with card games, you know, and I've tried to play games with, you know, uh, card games on digitally, you know, and, and mm. with Yu-Gi-Oh! and with all that stuff. But I miss just, you know, the physical thing, you uh, know, yeah. like having your own deck and, you know, placing the, the cards. Cardboard, the, yeah, exactly. the shuffle feel. Yeah, like exactly. So exactly. I'd, I'd say the spell table is a great thing. You just got to you gotta go to a local game store and check out Magic. Uh, At least I, get the... Get, Get arena on your phone, Magic the Gathering arena, and give it a shot. Especially a chess guy, oh, you'll yeah. love it. It's, yes. it's all strategy stuff. You love it. And, and uh, you know, I particularly got interested, and in, I saw that you have that too, where you put your cards into these swats, like the, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And I, I, I know so. I saw uh, Yu-Gi-Oh guys like um, do it, you know, having these, and I'm like, whoa. You have protective gear for your cards, like oh, you got cool. it. and it's so funny too because like a bunch of these. So there's like actual mag- magic cards, and then there's proxies. Mm. And so my wife, especially while we're talking about like anime stuff, my wife for Christmas got me a bunch of proxies, and they all look like that, like <laughs> just like ridiculous anime <laughs> boobs and stuff like that, like. You have some lightning graves. Just sure, of course, what you want. That's it's, it. It's exactly She's like, there you, there you go, sweetie. And that's why, so in the middle, she got me eight of these cards. So in the middle, I put uh, my card called Wedding Ring. Nice. <laughs> that's why she's got the Wedding Ring. All right, she <laughs> just accepts what a nerd I am. <laughs> just anime, magic, all of it, all in the same place. Oh, so, my God. That's, that's uh, this sounds, you know, Absolutely amazing, to be fair. Emptying you in. I did. I read a. I read a poll because I was thought about getting Alisana card sleeves. Yeah. Like because like, <laughs> dude, if you're not putting your cards in sleeves, like, come on, guys. Uh, but I was looking at like talking to somebody in China that was like a manufacturer yeah. through my work and stuff, and we we're talking about like minimum units. <laughs> I mean, the minimum is like two hundred thousand. Wow. Like it's, <laughs> wow. Maybe it's twenty thousand. I remember I would have to sell like. No, it was yeah, it was like it, there. It was a great deal on it, but then like I'm trying to justify spending like. But you thought about of, it, right? Thousands of dollars. Oh, I had a real <laughs> thought about it. thousands of dollars on this thing that clearly is just for me, and I'm like. <laughs> So, although some Alisana fans said they would 100% buy it, I do not know if we've got quite that many nerds that would buy these <laughs> card sleeves. But one day I will push it through because I just want the sleeves for myself. <laughs> like, you know, like, so I can, and it's just those little, I, th- I want to make Alisana dice at some point. And like, you know, it's just like the, the logo is a six. Uh-huh. So, like, you know. I can Im- I can imagine you like just you envisioning the moment where you're going to play with your deck and <laughs> That's yeah, a, these are my own sleeves. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I thought about making because there's there's tokens in Magic the Gathering. I'm like I could make a different token for each band member. Uh, wow. <laughs> it's like come on, like listen, we got oh, these ideas. Amazing. Oh my god, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. I had a few other things to ask, but I think if I get into these questions, we'll. You know, uh, we'll postpone the, the time quite a lot. So yeah. I'll cut you a deal. We can finish now, but we can have another episode soon if that's fine. Let's do another episode. <laughs> so I had a great time talking. Yeah, about. definitely. Like, likewise, I'm absolutely loving it. 
This um, is what happens when nerds get together. We get very sidetracked. You yeah. don't, not everyone is, is this just, it's rare to find others of your kind, but that's yes. why the yes. nerd universe is just, it brings people together. It's just like the music scene. Like when you talk about a band you're really into and yeah. like you can connect with someone from a completely different culture, yeah. like a different <laughs> part of the world. And like, dude, it's just, right on the same page so i i'm i'm honestly shocked because you know i was imagining that we'll be talking a, a lot about music and stuff like that but <laughs> i told you i'm not a musician i just i just, I just scream bro <laughs> i just scream and play magic backstage <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll make sure to like get myself familiar with magic rules so next time we talk we can potentially you know, that's that's that. hey man, I'm, I'm telling you, get the app, get frustrated because it's gonna, it's gonna teach you, and it's gonna be. But there's also YouTube videos explaining those initial teaching moments to kind of yeah. get your wrap your head around the uh, color theory and everything. So wow, nice. Uh, I'm definitely getting into that. To be fair, definitely. That's so. Thank you for, you know, introducing yeah, me to some hey, <laughs> I do not know what your fan base is like. Uh, I hope you, you enjoyed the episode. I hope there are other nerds out there. But, uh, you know, come, thank come, you. And come on now, like, to... uh, uh, like, you know, the, the guests I have on the podcast are basically alternative musicians and scientists. Because I'm into astrophysics and stuff, which is the oh, next sweet. big nerdy thing. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, this kind of fits in there. This is this is like the the less scientific, more just <laughs> turn turn all the actual important knowledge off, and the rest of the nerd that's left. <laughs> this is that. Yeah, but sorry, I, I, I cut you off. I, I'm so sorry about that. Mm -mm. No, uh, it's just as far as Alisana doing stuff. You know, we're running the web store. Uh, we've got we're finishing the trilogy tour this year, which is United States. We're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. We did the Emptiness album front to back around the U.S. And we did Place Where the Sun is Silent. So this one is Confessions, mm -hmm. the best of the trilogy, if you ask me. Okay. Uh, uh, and we're actually about to go hit Latin America. So we're going to Mexico and South America very shortly. And uh, so we're still out here, man. If you guys are old, old screamo, post hardcore yeah, be careful with know. the genres. Be careful yeah, with the exactly. genres. Yeah, exactly. We're pissing anybody off. But we have we have not broken up. We never yeah. broke up. We're just family men now that we tour on our own schedules when we want to. But we try to we try to, you know, get around to every country every decade or something. So we're, we're 20 years now. So we're probably due to come back to Europe. And you're playing, uh, aren't you playing like uh, the when we were young? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. We got invited to the dance. <laughs> yeah we're playing when we're young so yeah and uh that'll be fun it's just that it's there's such a, a void in the universe with no warp tour that uh -huh. when we were young it's just sold as this i'm like it's just it's warp tour but <laughs> i'm very happy we're playing i mean that diminished shout uh, there's a very fun festival yeah. but god oh my dude i saw that lineup and i saw everybody's supposed to be playing a full album I'm like that's impossible How, <laughs> that, cannot, yeah. that cannot happen i heard there's like rotating stages and stuff. <laughs> wow I'm like, well, I'm like we'll see man like i'll play as long as you guys want me to play but i'm oh. just sad i don't know, <laughs> I don't know if all these bands are getting through their whole albums i have to trim a couple songs so especially with especially considering the fact that like i can imagine the audience just being like these sort of older remos where they get like absolutely emotionally exhausted after they hear mm -hmm. like two or Dude, three classics. Think about yeah, think about it. you've <laughs> you've already got the most dysfunctional emotional fans out there in all black out in the <laughs> Vegas sun all day, just having their heartstrings pulled, dehydrated, <laughs> like just falling down left and right. God Almighty, who knows what's gonna happen? I'm gonna sell, dude. Hey, you want to talk about merch? I'm gonna sell Alisana parasols. Million oh dollar. wow, yeah, that, that's a nice pop one. up a little little goth umbrella. <laughs> that's that's you heard it here first. All right, nobody steal my idea. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much again for this. No this problem. was actually such a blast. You yes, know, I, had such I a would blast. I would keep bullshitting with you, but I have to yeah. go pick up my daughter from preschool. <laughs> that's important. That's, that's the that's important. the other side. See, I got I got to switch gears. <laughs> switch gears in the dad mode again.
Yeah, we'll do another episode. I mean, if you're all right with that, we'll definitely I'd do another I'd love episode. to, buddy. Same, same. Thank you so much. Yeah, Have a no nice problem. day, and uh, I'll talk to you soon, hopefully. Yes, sir.